The country of Portugal lying along the Atlantic coast of the Iberian Peninsula was once the continental Europe's greatest power. Portugal, also known as Portuguese Republic, holds a total population of approximately 10.3 million people and a land area of 92,212 square kilometers. But did you know that it has one of the most uneven population distributions in the world? Did you know that 70% of the land in Portugal is empty? So what are the factors that made a mainland region like Portugal go uninhabited? So before diving into the video, hit subscribe for a front row so that you won't miss out on our captivating content and be part of the adventures. So ready for the ride? Let's get started. The population of Portugal appears to be healthy enough at a little over 111 people per square kilometer. However, in reality, Portugal's interior is very densely populated with a low population densities and vast stretches of uninhabited land. In fact, people have estimated that up to 70% of the land in Portugal may actually be uninhabited. This means the majority of Portugal's 10 million people are concentrated within just 30% of the land in the western and southern coastal regions of the country. So let's find out what are the factors that have contributed to this highly uneven population. Portugal's topography has played a very significant role in shaping its population distribution. The country's interior is dominated by mountainous terrains, which can make it difficult to build infrastructures and access resources. Estrela, located in central Portugal, is the highest mountain range in mainland Portugal. This region's harsh climate with cold winters and snowfall makes it less attractive for people to settle there. Maybe this region of Portugal can be called as mini Antarctica. Portugal is also home to vast stretches of forest, which can make it challenging to cultivate crops and build settlements. The Alentejo region in southern Portugal is home of the largest cork oak forest in the world. Portugal's transportation system is another factor that makes the country less attractive for businesses. Portugal's highways are located along the coast. The interior regions are only accessible via narrow roads, and it could take longer to reach there. There are still some small towns and villages in the interior. These areas can offer authentic experience for travelers to see a different side of Portugal. Another factor that has contributed to the sparsely populated area is the country's diverse climate. Portugal's climate varies significantly depending on the region. The north and central part experience a cooler and wetter climate, while the southern parts experience a warmer and drier climate. Some regions, like Minho and Duros, receive higher levels of rainfall, and for some regions, such as the Algarve region, receive less rainfall than the rest of the country's annual average rainfall. The region's primary crops include olives, figs, almonds, and grapes, and all of these crops require significant amounts of water to grow. But did you know that the area which receives the highest rainfall has also been hit by drought. I now understand why people are running away from Portugal. It totally makes sense. Other than the geographical factors, the historical and economic development is also a major factor. Portugal experienced a period of dictatorship under the regime of Antonio de Oliveira Salazar, which lasted from 1932 to 1968. During this time, the government pursued policies that favored the coastal regions over the interior regions, leading to significant disparities in economic development and population distributions. During Salazar's regime, the country's economy was primarily focused on agriculture, with little investment in infrastructure or education. This leads to poverty and immigration. Many young people left the country in search of opportunities. Overall, these factors affected the people in Portugal, and they started to immigrate from their own country. In conclusion, the geographical factors such as topography and climate, as well as the historic and economic development, has contributed to the majority of Portugal being sparsely populated. However, despite these challenges, Portugal's government is committed to addressing the country's population distribution challenges and suitable future for all its citizens with the continued investment and innovative policy solutions. The country may be able to achieve this goal in the upcoming years. And that wraps up today's content. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring. Goodbye for now.